everybody. It's Caitlin at Franklin Park Zoo today, and we are coming live to you from our new white crane, right? My goodness, white naped crane exhibit. So they have a new hut here and a whole little swimming water area. It's a very zen exhibit. And so our white naped cranes, which Rachel's panning over to right now, actually used to live in front of our tropical rainforest building. So you may have seen them over there next to our Siberian cranes. At Franklin Park Zoo and Stone Zoo, we actually have an array of different crane species, which is really cool. We have a couple different species here at Franklin Park Zoo and a couple different species at Stone Zoo. Some of you may have seen the one from Stone Zoo about our whooping cranes that are an endangered species. So we are filming here today because of this new exhibit and it gives us a much better view of the birds and we're able to come in with them, which is really cool. So these two cranes that you're looking at are Alex and Amanda. So Alex is our male. He's the one who is kind of popping his head up a little bit. He's in the back. He's a little bit larger and taller than Amanda, who's our female in the front. So they are a breeding pair here at Franklin Park Zoo. And they did originally come to us in 2016 from the National Zoo. They were both there and they came here to Franklin Park Zoo to continue to be a breeding pair. So we were really excited that we were able to give them a nice new exhibit here um, over right next to Birds World. Those of you that know that building, you can come over to the sides and look right down into this exhibit and get a nice close look at them. <laughs> They're kind of checking everything out since this is a new exhibit to them. This is kind of new for them. Usually only the keepers are in here with them and they tend to just kind of keep their uh, space and move away from the keepers. So we don't typically go super close to them or try to touch them unless it is for a medical reason. They like to kind of keep their distance. So these cranes come from Mongolia, Siberia, Korea, China, and Japan. And they do migrate. So they do migrate to the China, Japan, Korea side for their breeding season. So they do migrate not too far, but to that space to breed. So these cranes do mate for life. So these two being together, we hope that they're going to be together for the rest of their lives. Typically with a uh, pair that is uh, monogamous that stay together, usually when one of their mates do pass away, they don't typically find another mate. Uh, some of the information I was reading about these uh, pairs of cranes is that they have noticed, researchers have noticed that when a mate does pass away, the other seems to be on the look for them, trying to find them, calling out. So they do notice some distress when that happens because it is a mate for life. They're, they've been with them typically for a long time at that point. And when they do migrate, they are never out of each other's sight. And if they do, they will make a very um, loud call to get back to each other. So they recognize their mate's call and that's how they're able to find each other if they do get out of each other's sights and need to be reunited. So the reason for the monogamous um, lifestyle that they live is that it also helps for raising their babies because they have a pretty long incubation period which means that they're gonna to need to be sitting on that nest for a long time. So they rotate spending time on those nests. 
So it's helpful when you have two, I'm sure a lot of parents can agree with this, when you have more hands to help with the kids. So that is essentially what they are doing. They work together um, to incubate the egg and they also work together to raise the young until they are able to go off on their own. So these cranes uh, typically live anywhere from 10 to 20 in their natural range and 40 to 50 in human care. So these two, Alex is 18 years old and Amanda is 31 years old. So she's one that hopefully will still be with us for a very long time because they can live up to 50. But the oldest crane recorded in human care was 45. So they can definitely get up to that range. And typically after they do have their chicks, they'll be around with their parents for about eight months until they go off on their own. And the parents make sure that during that time when they're gonna have chicks, they're very territorial of their breeding area to make sure that the chicks will have enough food when they are hatched. Because if there are lots of other birds, even other cranes or other bird species in the area, they might be eating a lot of the foods that their chicks are gonna need to eat. So come um, breeding and um, hatching time, they're very territorial of their space in their natural range. And what they do eat is because they have very long beaks, you can probably see on Alex standing in the back there, he has a really long beak and a strong beak. So what that helps them to do is to eat tubers, plant matter, seeds, roots, aquatic plants. And because they come from a wetland area, uh, wetland habitat, and that you can kind of see that in their exhibit here with the water source, they are also able to eat aquatic plants and um, other insects and invertebrates because they are omnivores. So actually right before we came in here today, a zookeeper helped us out and put a whole bunch of bugs over there for our cranes so that they had something to forage for um, and we could get a good look at them. So that's a really great activity for them to uh, forage for those bugs because that's what they would be doing in their natural range. So she kind of just threw them all around over there so that they would be able to get them. It looks like Amanda <laughs> is still kind of looking for some on the ground there, some of those um, mealworms. So because they are omnivores, they do enjoy their insects too. So here at the zoo, insects is a little bit of a treat for them, but in their regular diet, they get different kinds of bird grains and chows for um, omnivore cranes. And then they also get fish and meat. So they get a whole variety of foods here at the zoo, um, being omnivores and being such a large bird. They can be up to four feet tall and 12 pounds. So that's a, that's a really large bird. So you gotta make sure that you have enough food for them. And the last thing I wanna talk about with these cranes, which we try to talk about in all of our videos, is their conservation status. So these cranes are considered vulnerable, and that means that they have about 3,000, oh, she's, she's showing you her wings. They have about 3,000 to 5,000 left in their natural range. And their largest threat is the loss of wetland habitat because that's where they live and that's where they like to build their nests near. So they losing that habitat, of course, is going to threaten them. So that is their number one threat of uh, wetland uh, habitat being taken away for um, construction and agriculture and different things like that. So I do have a feather over here. If we wanna take a look at one of the feathers, that I found just when I came in here today because of the rain that's happened. It's a little, it looks a little messy, but this is one of their uh, feathers and it's, it's most likely from, it's probably hard to see on them, 
but their tails towards the back down here, they have um, white at the end. I know most of their feathers look pretty gray, but at the end of their tail, it's white. And so that's where some of these, I've seen a couple different white feathers throughout here have come out, but they also have, look, we can actually grab one right here because it's the summer months, they're gonna be molting a bunch of these feathers. So if you look at this one, that's definitely more from their back or their wings. It's clearly a lot smaller. And then ones from their neck are gonna be really small. Oh my gosh, we have so many over here, are gonna be more like this because they're really high up there. They have a really um, small feathers there. So they have a, clearly a variety of different feathers um, all over them, which is really cool. And so this is just kind of showing that they do uh, lose their feathers all throughout, similar to how we lose our hair they're gonna do the same thing at different times of the year. <laughs> they're so curious today. So did we have any questions that came through, Rachel? Uh, we, we not yet. Okay. Um, often can they lay eggs, do you know? Um, so these two have not successfully bred yet. They have had not had any chicks. Um, but they can breed every year. So each year when it comes into breeding season, what's really cool with cranes, which a lot of people might know from some of our cranes here at the zoo, is they have very elaborate dances that they'll do um, for their, to court their mates um, before, they, before they breed. And these cranes do the same thing. And then they breed during that time and hopefully will have chicks. But uh, these two, like I said, have not, have not um, produced any offspring yet. So hopefully they will soon. Maybe this new exhibit will be a good thing for them and they will uh, be able to breed and have some offspring here. But typically the, every year is when they can breed. And um, so these two, like I said, they are right next to our Birds World building here at Franklin Park Zoo. So you can come join them and see their new exhibit here. Um, they're really cool to see how large these cranes are. Um, and then you can still see our Siberian cranes, which are over next to our tropical rainforest building. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for joining us today in our new crane exhibit. We're really excited about it and excited to share our white naped cranes with you, Alex and Amanda. And hopefully we'll see everyone soon.